Good morning and welcome to our devotional here on this Monday. And uh, I pray that you enjoyed our series. We just closed um, just at the patterns of Jesus, really, honestly, the spiritual disciplines. And this one was really that patience, that waiting on the Lord. And I do think that uh, there was a lot of really good truth for us to learn from it. So I pray that you you caught it. If not, join it. Uh, there, it's, it's on Facebook Live still uh, that's been posted there. So you can take a look at that. And then we will repost it, of course, on Wednesday as well. But um, well, with that being said, you know, uh, today's devotional is really, um, you know, about kind of just in, in general, um, you know, about behavior, about who we are. And um, th the title of this was called Being Wrong. And it's based on Haggai uh, chapter 1, verse number 12. And it, it reads as follows, Then Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, uh, and Jeshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and the whole remnant of God's people began to obey the message from the Lord, their God. When they heard the, new, the words of the prophet Haggai, whom the Lord, their God, had sent, the people feared um, the Lord. And so, you know, um, Shealtiel and, and Yeshua, um, they, they, they really wanted to change what was happening, um, or the son of Shealtiel, Zerubbabel, um, they wanted to change kind of the, what was going on in the camp so to speak. And so, you know, I, th I started thinking about what, what this is really about being wrong, right? So the first thing uh, I, I thought about was, you know, during the pandemic, um, uh, I picked up barbecuing um, and I started uh, with the recipe for the burger first, so to speak. And I worked in different types of steaks, then moved to chicken. I did a salmon, a tilapia, as well as a tuna steak. Uh, all became a little bit of favorites, but it was through recipes. Um, each recipe had a different combination, of course, uh, of ingredients that made up the taste that my family came to enjoy, essentially. And I can recall a few times when I got it wrong, you know, and, uh, and the, the, the taste was rather unique. I wouldn't say bad but um, it was different and so the enjoyment uh, came with mixed emotions so to speak some said yeah it was good so others uh, would say ah, I think it, it could it's too too much of, of the spices or, or too much of this one spice so in the end I just I got it wrong and so what did I do I, I rethought the recipe re you know rethink it and um, and and tried something different and you know okay this is a winner you know and I continue to try and play with it from now from time to time but the reason why I bring this up is being wrong is never a nice feeling I mean honestly um, if you got the facts wrong or you went in the wrong direction or you you get mad at yourself and you you kind of get really frustrated or embarrassed about it and it's it's a mistake you know and so uh, essentially sometimes that impacts people how they look at you how you feel all that wonderful stuff right but when it comes to the Lord um, we have a walk that is on display for everyone to see right um, everyone can see exactly how we're responding how we're communicating and how we're doing things and so many are quick to pass judgment unfortunately and even criticize groups of people uh, for their actions of a small group of amount of people and hold everyone accountable to that one specific mistake. And today's world, unfortunately, social media provides the platform to point the finger and show someone's faults and, and essentially group everyone together and say, hey, you all responded this way. And, and I think that that's, you know, we got to be cautious with that. I mean, scripture tells us in, a, in Psalm 119 verses 1 through 3, joyful are people of integrity. Uh, who follow the instructions of the Lord. Joyful are those who obey His laws and search for Him with all their hearts. They do not comprise, uh, compromise with evil, and they walk only in His paths. So I think there's a lot of uh, straightforward uh, statements there about you know, what we should be doing as the people of God. And so being blunt, I'm just being honest, we, I, I think we've all failed at times. Uh, whether it's relationships, marriages, careers, businesses, ideas of people, even our own behavior at times. People, things that we once thought have changed now today. Uh, what, what we thought 10 years ago is maybe not the same thing we think today, right? All of a sudden, things have changed within our world. And we should be careful not to point out someone else's faults publicly when we have a closet full of stuff of our own that we have forgotten about, right? And so I, I'm just being honest and transparent. And as, as I said, I was going to be blunt. Um, but forgive the mistakes of others, folks. Forgive them, even if they're even if they're not pointed at you, but about something maybe you believe or believe is right. Um, remember, we forgive the person, not the fault. I want to remind you of that. We forgive the person, not the fault. 
being wrong should not isolate you from others and somehow, unfortunately, it divides us. And so we delete friends on Facebook and we attack in judgment and we cause this division within homes and families and friends. Oh my goodness, all because we can't admit that maybe because someone else is wrong that we can't be wrong either. I mean, let, let's be honest. The Bible tells us in Leviticus chapter 19, verse number 18, this. Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against a fellow Israelite, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Now you say, Pastor, wait a second here. That refers to the Israelites. But if you look at the topic of the chapter it refers to, it's holiness in personal conduct. So yes, we are not the Israelites. You are absolutely right. But we are part of the children of God. And holiness is an expectation that is directly associated to our conduct. So I think its application is relevant today. You know, acknowledging our faults is when God's grace goes into action, folks. He sets us straight, straightens us up, and gives us a second chance. And some of us, it's more than one. Some of us, we're running on a couple thousand, right? But the reality is God still does that for us. Why? Because we have too many to count. We have too many mistakes, too many faults, too many errors that we've made to be able to isolate it to just one forgiveness from the Lord. In the end, yes, that person may be wrong. That that situation may be wrong, that circumstance may be wrong, but when we don't respond with love and forgiveness, well, unfortunately, we are equally wrong according to the scripture because we're not supposed to take revenge. We're not supposed to do those types of things. An act of holiness is by, by to love our neighbor as yourself. That's what the scripture says in Leviticus. It was an instruction from the Lord. And so in the end, what's more important is that we respond with love and forgiveness because we are equally as wrong as them if we don't. We both need to ask the Lord to set us straight, to stand us upright, to unite us, not divide us, to love, to love people as they are. It's what we should be known for. That's what the Bible tells us also. I close with the scripture in John 13, 35. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. In the end, what are we proving? I mean, to the world, what are we proving? The Bible tells us that the hope is that our actions would prove to the world that we are his disciples and that we are united, we are one family, and that we love one another. So as we bow our heads, we're all wrong. No one is right. We're all wrong in the way we do things or the way we respond or maybe someone's actions, but it doesn't make a difference. We just gotta learn how to respond in love, do it privately. The Bible tells us to go to our brother first and then before we, we go publicly, we go to our brother and sister privately first. Let's follow scripture and I think that we will change the image of what the people of God really look like. Let's bow our heads as we pray. Thank you, Lord, because I think in the end, if we can just turn to your word for direction, I think many of us would, um, would stop making some mistakes within our lives that are causing deeper caverns between how people see us as the people of God. And so, Lord, my prayer is before we pass judgment on somebody or specifically, Lord, we kind of criticize somebody for their faith and how they are responding Calling people on the carpet isn't the answer. That's not what this is about. What this is really about is learning how to love as the people of God and to care for people. And so, Lord, you know, I don't know um, what more to say than other. Lord, help us, give us direction, uh, convict those that need that conviction, provide God a peace in someone's heart that needs to say something. <laughs> I just got to say it. You know, let us have a peace about that, Lord, that we would be able to understand that you have things under your control and let thy will be done. And so Lord, I, I pray um, through the word that we have just looked at, that um, the response is love. That's what you're looking for. The response is love and to forgive. And Lord, I pray that we would embrace that, walk in it and trust that your word is true and it, it does point us in the right direction. I pray blessing over your children now. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and May he give you peace throughout this week. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for joining us. 
Well, as we close this devotional off for this Monday, I pray that you're doing well and um, other opportunities for you to share. Um, these devotionals are available through our social media. Uh, we are on YouTube, we are on Facebook, we are on Instagram, as well as our church app and our website. And I would just encourage you to take a look at those. These are places where you can go to get fed, whether it's through past sermons or past devotionals. But um, we encourage you. Um, I, there is going to be a purging, just so you know, uh, very soon, where we'll only keep a year, the current year. So if you want to enjoy those, please Please get to them before they go. Uh, they'll no longer come back. They'll be gone forever. So if you have love a devotion of the past, make sure that you either save it or share it um, because eventually that's going to go away. We'll only keep the current year on there. Hey, thanks you for joining us and God bless you.